Hey everybody, before we get into today's episode, I want to take a minute to introduce our latest service called Crowd Insight by Gadgetflow. It's an awesome tool we made to help you get honest feedback for your upcoming crowdfunding project. Some of the big results we've seen include increased conversion rate, finding out why your project isn't performing well, and getting feedback you need from potential backers. So please head over to gadgetflow.com slash crowd insight to check it out today. You can also find a link in this week's show notes. Now let's get into the episode. Hello world, this is the Gadget Flow Podcast, the show about everything related to products, entrepreneurship, marketing, and crowdfunding. This week, I got to talk with Mark Campbell, who is the VP of Marketing at InventureX, and Mark is a total expert in crowdfunding and has had a ton of success as an entrepreneur himself. He answered a lot of questions we have never asked on the show today, and he's just an awesome dude. So without further ado, here's my interview with Mark Campbell. All right, I am here with Mark from Adventure X. Mark, how are you doing today, man? Very good. How about you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. You are coming to us from Los Angeles, California, correct? Yep. Nice sunny Los Angeles today. That is awesome. So, man, we're so excited to have you on the podcast this week. We know you have a lot of expertise in the crowdfunding space, and I have a bunch of questions to ask you about that. But first and foremost, I always like to ask my guest um, a little bit of how you got into crowdfunding in the first place. So can you just briefly explain like your story and um, maybe maybe how you got to, to doing what you're doing now? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I've been doing digital marketing for 10 years now. Um, Before crowdfunding, uh, I was really into just the startup space. So before crowdfunding was a hot topic, everyone was just trying to launch their product or launch their new app or tech startup. Um, they weren't really trying to crowdfund their app or crowdfund their tech startup. They were just trying to, you know, find investors, things like that, or get their first users. So that's really the the space that I came from is the the tech startup space and launching new apps, acquiring users, uh, launching new products, um, things like that. Uh, slowly as crowdfunding took off, then um, we just started recommending that as like our primary strategy for for folks, and then we ended up just becoming a a full blown like product launch slash crowdfunding agency, if you will. And that now that's ninety percent of our business is crowdfund launches. Awesome. So yeah, real quick, can you just explain like a, you said crowd, crowdfunding launches. So what is that exactly what InventureX does? Is, I mean, what can you cover everything you guys do? Yeah. So in VentureX, we, we work with people in the early product development stage where they might just barely have a prototype or a, a product idea. And they've really done everything they can do to bring the product up to that point. And they're hitting a, a wall. They're basically hitting a wall where they can't get to that next stage without getting funding. So that's when they start looking around, looking for investors or looking for partners and things like that. And that's, that's when we uh, connect with them and we figure out a, a plan to crowdfund their product, raise the money that they need, and then take their business to the next stage. Got it. Got it, man. Well, okay. That's awesome. We, we know what you guys do and we know you're experts at it. So I'm, I'm going to just start jumping in with a few questions if that's okay with you. Um, yeah, sure. the, the first being is, and it's one I like to ask, um, especially experts like you guys um, in the crowdfunding space, what would you say is the most common either misconception or bad piece of advice you hear about crowdfunding um, that, that's kind of floating around right now? That you'd like to do oh, the bad piece of advice um yeah so <laughs> we, we get we get some interesting stuff uh, because people before they come to us you know some of them are googling around they're they're trying to figure out how crowdfunding works how crowdfund marketing works and they read a blog post from you know like 2000 like 10 mm-hmm. and <laughs> and uh uh, that some random person put online about how crowdfund marketing works. And sometimes they'll come to us with all these very big, like generalizations about how different things work. And they're trying to really launch their entire strategy or a crowdfund marketing strategy based on 
these very generalized points about crowdfund marketing. And it gets a little frustrating sometimes because what worked, you know, five, 10 years ago doesn't exactly work anymore. Sure. And whenever you're doing a crowdfunding project, every project is different. So you can read a case study about what happened with this particular um, product five years ago and very little of that that could actually apply to its misconceptions is uh, just modeling kind of blindly the, the general strategy of a past project because they read it on, you know, a blog post somewhere. Mm, so you're Everything saying there's custom tailored, right? So there's no, there's no magic formula is what you're saying. Everything has to, exactly. that, that works for everything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'll give you an example. If someone comes to us with them, they're like, oh, I, this is my marketing strategy. And it's more or less composed of a few bullet points that we call rules of thumb, where it'll be like, oh, I want to get 30% of my funding in week one. That's my strategy, because I read that on a blog post. Mm. And then I also want to um, reach out to um, people on Twitter. And then I want to reach out to people on Instagram. And that's my marketing strategy. And we're like, okay, well, it's going to take a lot more than that. Uh, it's, you know, that's obviously like an exaggerated uh, example, but we get stuff like that sometimes where it's like everything has to be custom tailored from start to finish. And these little kind of rules of thumb uh, aren't a, a real strategy to go off of, you know, that you might read online. Sure. Well, I know that there's a lot, I'm positive there's a lot of demand to work with you guys. So my next question is for you, who is an ideal customer or what's an ideal project for you guys to work on? Yeah. So, I mean, we get hundreds of applications a, a week uh, for new product launches and new ideas and all kinds of stuff. Um, for us, it, we focus on a few different things. One is the, the idea. Obviously, they have to have a great, a great idea. That can be a new product, a new, a new gadget. Uh, it could be an app idea or a web platform, something like that as well. We've had really great experiences with both. Um, and we can talk about, you know, some of the things we look for, but we also look for the person behind the product or idea as well. So th there's a lot of emphasis on who's really behind the product and idea. Are they passionate about it? What are their motivations? Um, do they see crowdfunding as kind of just like this get rich quick thing, or do they have an idea or a business idea that they're just super passionate about and they're committed to and they see crowdfunding as a means to, to an end, mm, you know, of, of a yeah. bigger vision. So those are some of the things that, that we look for, um, in terms of like the product, what's the best product possible. Uh, I can tell you what doesn't work. Typically the product ideas that we shy away from are something that's very like industrial, like B2B stuff where, mm. you know, it's this, this, uh, new technology for, <clears throat> you know, that, uh, oil rigs want to put on their, you know, thing. It's something like that's not really going to work. That that's pretty much the only like rule of thumb where we won't even look at it. Um, everything else we'll consider on a case by case basis and do, do research on it, see if it's a good fit. Got it. So I don't want to obviously don't give away all your guys secret sauce, but, but I am curious. So with, when you're, when you're talking about a founder or a person who's wanting to launch a, a crowdfunding campaign, how, what is your process to, uh, deciding whether or not they're a real deal? Like how do you sniff out whether or yeah. not you, you, what does that process look like to deciding whether or not they're a good fit or, or someone you want to work with long-term? Yeah, it's a good question. So, uh, I think the number one thing we look for is, uh, how much have they invested in it so far? Mm. Um, if they, if it, in some cases they might not have invested that much in it, but they're uh, for, certain reasons but uh most of the time when we partner with someone they've already invested into their idea in the prototyping and the uh, development of it uh they, they've they've made investments that shows they're committed to it um also the, they have maybe a few different ideas that they're working on they're not working on like a hundred different ideas right so when we see someone who's working on a hundred different ideas and uh, has a day job, also drives Uber and, you know, does a hundred other things. <laughs> we typically can tell they're not very, you know, serious about it. We like people that are a little more focused, have maybe that one idea. They might have more than one idea, but they're, they're focused on one idea and they've invested something into it. That's a good indication that, uh, you know, they're, they're serious about it. They're not time wasting. Got it. That makes a lot of <laughs> sense, man. So um, 
we spoke for a second before jumping on the call, but you, you, I know you guys have recently done a survey and, and we talked for about it for a second and you got me very, very curious about the survey and your findings. So will you describe what you guys, maybe just describe what the survey was and then what you guys found in it? We, we basically surveyed um, our list of uh, crowd funders. We have you know thousands of people on our, on our newsletter. So we did a survey to them and basically said, what's your number one question with crowdfunding? You know, if you're, you're trying to launch a new product, what's the number one question that you have? And overwhelmingly, they basically said, my number one question is, is my idea right for crowdfunding? So you get, you've get, you get a lot of people uh, nowadays where they have ideas that don't fit the perfect crowdfunding mold, but they're still, they still see an opportunity to use crowdfunding to further their business. Um, so that's, that's what we've seen lately as a new trend of people that don't exactly have that you know, new uh, charging accessory or, you know, the typical crowdfunding stuff that might raise, you know, decent money. They have something a little, little out of the ordinary. Maybe they have a big idea and they're not sure if it's right for crowdfunding. They have a hard way of evaluating that. Sure. So let, uh, let's dig into that a little bit. How, uh, how, how do you know? Like, <laughs> how do you guys answer that question? You know, yeah. like what, what's a, do you have any examples maybe, or could you outline maybe? Yeah. How, how do you know? Well, I'll tell you how that, that question comes uh, up. It's because they crowdfunding has a reputation of being only suitable for physical products. And that, that reputation in some ways is well found than a non-physical product, right? Because you have to get a little more creative with your reward strategies and, and, and things like that. But the, the biggest uh, reason why that question comes up is there are a growing number of people that want to use crowdfunding to launch a new mobile app or a web platform or something like that. Just that's the way technology is going now. Everything is digital. So there are a lot of people that have very viable, awesome products, but that product isn't exactly you know, a gadget you can put on your shelf. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, it's a, it's an app or it's the next, you know, big web platform or, or service. So we're increasingly getting a lot of people that have great ideas and they don't know if they can use crowdfunding or not. Um, the good news is yes, uh, many of them can use crowdfunding. Uh, is it, will they raise as much as a physical product? Often not, but they'll still raise, um, you know, with the right marketing behind them, they can still raise, enough funding within their, their target niche or, or industry, you know, to help them along. Okay. So do you, yeah. Do you have any examples of that that you've seen work? Yeah. Yeah. One project, we actually just finished up one, um, in the last couple of weeks. That was the furthest thing from a physical product you can imagine. It was, uh, it was actually for a, uh, it was funding to, uh, finance a scientific experiment. Okay. And I know that that already sounds like, out there, right? Yeah. It, it gets it gets better though. It gets even better. So the, the the experiment was to test if we live in a virtual reality, and these were like NASA scientists and like top like physicists around the the world, really, um, that came together to do this experiment. And they came to InventureX to basically say, "How the heck are we going to crowdfund this? Like, is this, mm. can you even crowdfund this?" Um, on its face, you'd probably think no. Like this is just so out there. But once we started getting into it, we found that there are audiences online that are really interested in this question. Hmm. Uh, it almost has like a quasi religious feel to it in a way. Um, there are a lot of scholars and other people that are part of groups online that are very interested in this. So once we identified those groups, uh, we actually said, yeah, we think that we can put together a launch strategy for this. And we worked with them for several months to make sure it was done correctly. Um, and we launched uh, the campaign. They raised almost a quarter million dollars of people who uh, just wanted to see this thing happen. They wanted to support it and go and be a part of the journey. They weren't exactly getting a physical product or anything for doing that. It's just, uh, it's all about finding at the end of the day, it's all about finding the right audience and having the right marketing in place. That's going to tell us if, if your idea can be crowdfunded or not. Right. So I, I think that's awesome. <laughs> that's such a cool idea. And I, it was a lot of fun. I, I it, yeah. And I would have never, it's very outside of the box for crowdfunding, but you know, now that you, 
you say it, it, I totally see why people would get behind that and fund it. You know, it makes a lot of sense why they would get excited to support that. So is that right. something you see, you see expanding in the future is, I mean, are non physical yeah. products going to be, is this, this going to be a bigger thing? Absolutely. This can work for, for anything. Um, is it harder to do than your typical, uh, you know, g- gadget accessory thing? Yes. Uh, it is a lot more work. Uh, that's why a lot of crowdfunding agencies, they don't uh, really have a program for non-physical products. Um, so in the last year, we've had to hire more staff that are specialized in just apps and, and web platforms and user acquisition marketing because it's a different ballgame. So um, we've, we've had to adapt um, to the market as well. And I think there uh, are, is a ton of potential. You can do this with any, anything, um, any mobile app or, or product you're working on. We can help you uh, not only find your target audience, but adapt your product to the crowdfunding context and, and figure out what rewards and things you can offer people. Um, now, the okay. big thing, the elephant in the room is equity crowdfunding. Now, that's the next frontier for other types of non-physical products as well, where it could be a free app or, or service where there's no possible way you can give away a reward, just no matter how creative you try to get. Mm-hmm. And uh, equity crowdfunding could be the next step for them as well. So there's always that option that's that's starting to develop over the last couple of years. That is interesting. <laughs> I like that idea a lot. Very, very cool. Um, well, hey man, I, want, I don't want to take too much more of your time. I have one, one last question for you. Um, sure. If you, if you're, I'm thinking of a, of someone, and I like to finish with this question. I'm thinking of someone who might be launching their very first crowdfunding campaign. Maybe they're starting to Google around a little bit or whatever. Maybe they're just new and fresh to the whole concept of crowdfunding. What would be the one piece of advice you would give to that person as the the primary thing they should focus on in having a uh, successful crowdfunding campaign? besides having a good product that is obviously the given you have to have an excellent product what is the, what is the the next thing that they should be focusing on you got to find the right partner if you're a, an expert in your particular product or or field you, you might know that product really really well but chances are you don't know crowdfund marketing you're not a digital marketing expert um you're going to run into a lot of trouble if you try to do every little part of your business on your own. And you'll know that as you're, as you're an entrepreneur and you're growing, you're going to, you're going to run into that many different times. Mm. Um, it's often best to hire an expert to do some of that stuff. Now I'm not even saying hire us. Obviously I am biased. I do think we're, we're the best. Um, we've got a great reputation online. You can Google us and see, I, I think we're the best. I'm biased, but I'm just saying, don't even, not even us, just someone, a partner. You need a partner to do this. Um, what we like to say is, you know, if you're crowdfunding a project and you're not a digital marketing expert, it's kind of like performing your own, you know, root canal on yourself. Mm. You can end up doing, not only are you not going to get the job done, but you can actually end up doing a lot of damage, right? So, yeah. um, so that's the, the number one thing is if you've got a great idea, you really believe in it, you want to invest just a little bit more and get in the right marketing buying you, get in the right partner, um, and you can really, uh, have, you know, get a lot out of crowdfunding. Man, couldn't have said it better. That that is awesome, man. So, Mark, thank you so much for being on the show this week. I think uh, that one's packed with awesome, awesome, and helpful information. So, where can people connect with you online? Yeah. So, if you know, if you have an idea, uh, you know, assuming you you want to crowdfund it and raise some money and, and partner up, um, you can go to adventurex.com. The first step you'll do is, you know, you'll fill out a, a crowdfunding questionnaire form. Uh, we just ask you some questions, get a better idea of your product and your niche. Um, it also has an NDA on there for your, so, you know, everything's confidential on there that you send us. And then what we'll do is if we think it's a good fit, we'll get a strategy call together. Um, we'll actually work with you to figure out um, if your product is right for crowdfunding and we go from there. So if it's not a good fit, we also, you know, try to point you in the right direction too. Awesome. We will include a link to your guys' website in the show notes for everyone listening. Mark, thank you so much for being on, man. Uh, And for everyone out there, make sure to go connect with him online. So, Mark, thanks for being on this week. Alex, it was a pleasure. Gadget Flow, you guys are doing great stuff. I look forward to collaborating more in the future. I know we're on your, uh, your like, recommended 
agency list already. And uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, doing more business together. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Have a good one. All right, you too. Thanks. That was my interview with Mark Campbell. So please make sure to go check out everything he is doing at InventureX. And make sure to shoot them a message if you have a crowdfunding campaign coming up. Thanks for being on, Mark. This podcast is made by GadgetFlow. And we are proud to be the number one platform to find new and awesome gadgets. So please make sure to check out the site for all the new products we curate every single day. We'll be back next week with another new episode. So in the meantime, please go give us a very good rating and review on iTunes. Thank you so much for listening to the Gadget Flow Podcast.